Okay. So, um, so as I was saying, so yeah, when I got here, there were so, so many things that, you know, you would normally be doing as a nurse in Jamaica, but by the time you get here, you have to really cut out some of those because you have respiratory therapists, you have, okay, okay, nice, nice. So pretty eye says that, uh, she's currently, or he's currently at work and sorry, I'm not so sure what gender, so I'm going to be using the e, she here. Okay. Um, your she says that, you know, currently at work. Okay, you're leaving in 30 minutes. Okay, she, so pretty eyes. Thank you for that. Um, she um, is currently at work and leaving in 30 minutes. Okay, so, <laughs> um, so yeah, so that was it um, when I got here because then you realize that you have, hi, Aaron to CEO. Thank you so much for tuning in. How are you doing? Um, <laughs> you have, um, so many different um, persons being a part of the team. So you usually see them in textbook, you know, but no, they're alive and well on the floor that you're working. So you have a phlebotomist, you have your um, respiratory therapist, you have additional tech. So it makes your work a little bit easier, but then certain little things that you normally would do, you're not able to do them. So um, that was just the only problem, you know, when you get here, um, that some of your skills that you normally would be you know, doing in Jamaica, your blood draw, um, you know, your IVs. You might be doing IVs or, yeah, if you're in the emergency room, you'll be doing IVs like right around the clock, probably sleeping and doing IVs. But if you're on the floor, if in Jamaica you were practicing and doing all of that, you know, putting your IVs and everything, catheters and everything, then by the time you get up here, your rule kind of cut down or your duties kind of cut down a little bit. So you realize that a lot of persons tend to, not really say shy away, but you know, after a while, they just kind of lose their skills some way, um, some way along the line. So, um, that's the only thing about it. But, um, nursing is nursing, you know, you just that you just have to think of where you are and you know, make sure that what you're doing still remains in your scope. Because, you know, when you're in a third world country or you know, not a first, first world country then things are going to be different, even though the goal is going to be the same thing. Um, so you just have to remember that, you know, this first world country you're practicing and every resource is available to you at your fingertips. Um, okay, Courtney says we are in the north, so it's um, the opposite. Okay, yeah, um, I'm not so sure what it is like working for, um, in Canada. I don't really know much about that. I remember when I was in Maine, up north there, we had a patient who came over to our hospital. And that patient, I don't remember, there was some issues with insurance. But the closest hospital would have been like, say, 10 minutes away from that patient. But they were, um, they were literally at the border. And uh, because they never had insurance in Canada, which, you know, we understand our, yeah, they weren't Canadian citizens, so even though they were right at the border, they couldn't access, this gentleman was having a heart attack, couldn't get access to, you know, the hospital that was, I think the hospital was probably like, say, four hours away, or five hours, thereabouts. The major hospital that I was working at, and they had to transport this gentleman. I think he ended up passing, unfortunately, and I was just there trying to understand, you know, but then you just have to remember that there is a big border. So, um, but yeah, and everybody was just wondering the same thing, you know, it's not just the international nurses were wondering the same thing. Like, okay, so a hospital is like 10 minutes away, but this is the U S and then you have, you know, Canada, which is 10 minutes away where they have a big hospital and the patient couldn't actually go there. So they drove with this patient and it took hours before they could actually get an ambulance up there because they were, if you're familiar with Maine or you don't have to be familiar with Maine, but Maine has a lot of land space and uh, um, like in between, you're probably living right here and your neighbor is probably like say five, 10 minutes away. So if anything is happening, oh Lord, it's just you and the wilderness out there. You know, nobody, there's nobody for you to call and say, hey, come and help me. And so by the time someone was able to go and see that patient or the family, you know, it was just a little bit too late by the time they got to the hospital. So it's nice living in those little, you know, places, but then we have to just think of access, access to healthcare and all. So that was just the sad part about it. Um, yeah. 
All right, remember to double tap on your screen, okay? Remember to double tap on your screen. Oh, there was a young lady the other day who had asked a question um, regarding... I said I was going to make a video. <laughs> I don't know if she's here. But she had asked a question about um, when I was in college, when I spoke about, you know, I had $250. So I had $250 for lunch money. And um, I never really used that money. Are you an angel of love? Thank you for that nice comment, um, Mr. Darrell, um, though you're asking a question. Um, but yeah, so the young lady had asked a question regarding the $250 saying that she was just kind of curious as to how the $250 was divided. You know, what days I went ahead and eat, what days I didn't eat, so, something like that. So just to clarify that, um... Like when I was in college, like as I say, some days we never really had enough money. But if I had gotten, like say for example, $250, a lot of times we never really take taxi to school because we had rented a place in the area, in Mandeville, because it was cheaper for three of us to stay in one room and go to school rather than, you know, be driving or getting taxi from where we were living. So it was cheaper that way. And that's what we were doing. But we never really had that much money. And so, you know, we went ahead and uh, was there. But I would get the $250 and my sister would get $250. So what we do is we normally just save that money only for rainy days where, you know, if it's definitely literally flooding outside, that's when you actually use that money. Or, you know, if it is really late where we, you know, one person was left at school, then we would definitely go ahead and, uh, you know, um, take taxi at that time. But the money wasn't really used. We'll just have it there for days upon days. And so she was asking about that. So I was just going to try and answer her here by saying that's how we went ahead and do it. It was more of, okay, if you're in college um, and you needed... Um, to you know stay at school to do some extra work then it was your opportunity to use the money if it's a case where you needed to take taxi come home otherwise i'll just wait for my sister and we'll just walk it home and then she was asking about the half a chicken and whatever my mom had sent like yeah we cook before going to school not necessarily every day but we'll cook from before the night before and so we'll normally eat and then get home for lunch or for dinner and that was it so we never really made it a big problem you know uh, Courtney is asking how long ago was that? That was in how long ago was that? Uh, 2000 and uh, so probably like 2007, 2008, 9. Yeah, just just like around the corner there, so just just like the other day, you know. Um, yeah, so even though I have a few gray hairs, I'm not that old people, you know, stress. <laughs> Oh, Lord. Yeah, it's just the other day. Um, I've, I've, I've finished college, like, I've finished college since, how long now? Whew. 2012? Yeah. So, it was, like, just the other day. So, yeah, that's just my upbringing. So, if you haven't checked out my videos, I did post it, like, you know, a few videos with information regarding all of that. So, you can go ahead and check out those videos. And just, you know, enjoy a little bit of a laughter there when you're listening to the story that I'm sharing. But yeah, I did all of that. And if you're from St. Anne, you're supposed to know how, well, probably you don't know. But yes, I used to make, you know, charcoal with my parents as well um, in in primary school. And uh, used to pick pepper, tomato and all those things. My wife finished in 2008. <laughs> I know, pretty eyes. Yeah. I'm embracing mine. Yeah. So, okay. Your wife finished in 2008. Okay. Okay. Nice. Um, 2008. Who graduated that time? Okay. Yeah. No. So, one of my sister, one of my other sister graduated in 2008 and one graduated in 2000 and... Uh, or like 2000. Probably around 2008 as well. Yeah. So one did teacher education, one did accounts, and I did nursing. So, yeah. <laughs> but it was like just the other day when I had all of these experiences and all. So, yeah. 
that's just my story um, that I'm sharing. So hopefully, you know, other persons can hear the story and be like, oh, so she can do it. Then we can do it too. So that kind of vibe. Yeah, man, that's what my channel is about. It's about motivating and encouraging persons. So, you know, just in case anybody out there thinking that it's not possible, you know, there's light at the end of the tunnel. That's all. So, yeah. So if you're new here, remember to go ahead and tap on the screen. All right. So kind of give it a thumbs up. All right. So, um, yeah. So that's that's just my upbringing, my life. The tunnel long though. <laughs> the tunnel. I know. Yeah, the tunnel very, very long. <laughs> Trina's motivation. Okay. Yeah. So um, but eventually, you know, the tunnel still still have a bottom. Yes, there's still gonna be a light at the end of the way. Alright. You're still gonna figure it out. So sometimes it might take you one year, two years, even if it takes you ten years, you will find the bottom of that tunnel or the end of the tunnel. All right, Trina says, Courtney, walk go on. Okay, okay. All right, Trina is here. Okay, is Trina your wife, Courtney? <laughs> okay, Trina. Trina finished in 2008. I don't have 10 years, me too old. <laughs> okay, oh, family. Okay, nice. Nice for um, taking the time out, you know, and just supporting me here okay nice nice um yeah so that's just all right some of these emoji <laughs> i mean i get familiar with them as it here so i'm gonna take time with me um yeah i just have to kind of abracadabra hi abracadabra how are you doing thank you so much for joining again really appreciate you taking the time out um so yeah so that was just my little upbringing um and my little story my journey through college um hi paul thank you so much for tuning in okay so trina's motivation says scroll me and scroll and see courtney so me make make me stop <laughs> okay so you're a nurse trina you say you don't have 10 years what area are you in <laughs> okay and did trina went to ncu as well <laughs> just here you said there is light at the end of the tunnel okay <laughs> yeah there is light at the end of the tunnel you know i was just kind of talking about um i was just kind of talking about you know my my background a little bit regarding uh college days I put out a video and one person was asking about, you know, the amount of money I had gotten. So I was just kind of explaining all of that. Um, but there is a video. Please remember to go ahead and subscribe if you haven't subscribed as yet. Okay, so you can hear the entire saga. So there's a section that says um, my Jamaican journey. That's where everything regarding, you know, my upbringing, my college days and what, you know, my background look like. Yeah, man, that's where it is at you know so i want you guys to check it out and then you know leave your comments there and there are other videos on the on the channel as well um paul says need you from okay i don't really know what's that rephrase paul and then you know send it again all right no problem trina and if you're a nurse i think it, well i'm gonna say it, if you're a nurse on the channel here um my channel is gonna you know featuring will be featuring nurses as well so i want to hear about you know all of those persons who have similar story or even if your story not really similar as mine and you have the uptown life then uh, you know i definitely want to hear more stories about you know what your background was like and where you're at no no nurse you're not a <laughs> you're not a nurse okay well eventually you know we can we can talk about whatever area you're in as well but yeah so if you're a nurse or if you know anybody that is a nurse especially jamaican nurses then i will definitely be featuring them on my channel here just to kind of shed a little bit of light on them um oh leave that to courtney wife and sister okay so the family are nurses okay nice nice i will definitely check out courtney's page 
All right, when I'm finished here, because I don't know how to do this thing where I see persons clicking and then commenting or responding to another person. Because when I press on it, it's not doing anything. So, yeah. But I will definitely check out um, Courtney's page there to see what is up. Yeah, so... um. Oh, you don't do... Oh, you don't have a YouTube channel. Okay, I just saw a picture, so I thought it was like a channel. Okay, no problem. That's understandable. I was never really a social media person either. Still not a social media person. But I just... As I say, I just have so many things that I want to do um, with like, you know, giving back. And this is just one way for me to start my little journey. So I'm not a YouTube... I'm not really a YouTuber. I'm not, I'm not trying to be an influencer or anything like that. <laughs> yeah, I just want to share, you know nursing content and uh, that's it because when i was doing my transition to the state here i i never had much resource like you know from another nurse to hear how it is like with the whole process you know working in the u.s what you're not supposed to do what you're supposed to do. so that was just it um for me and so i wanted to just kind of get a platform up and running where persons can actually ask questions on that um, Courtney is not a content creator, just a great supporter. Okay, nice, nice. I really appreciate those persons. So thank you, Courtney, for doing that. Yeah, I'll go through YouTube and do the same where, you know, I see, especially Jamaicans, I support everybody as long as they have good content. But especially with my Jamaican folks, if I see, you know, persons there doing their thing, I'm definitely going to be hopping on and just listen and hear what they're doing and, you know, just support them as I go along. Um, so that's just it. All right. So thank you so much to anybody else who has um, popped on in the last 15, 20 minutes. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you haven't subscribed as yet, you know, I'm asking you to sub subscribe to the channel. All right. Do we have anybody else who want to ask any question or anything here? Feel free to, you know, put it out there. As I said, this is a channel where I discuss nursing content. And um, anything else regarding lifestyle and uh, um, travel in the same little, you know, area, mm -hmm. nursing, healthcare. No, the other day somebody came and asked something about uh, one of those mix up that is going on on the on the YouTube right now. So I'm not really into that. So just stick to the topic here. Yeah, so. Where is that one that I wanted to? Are into CEO, are you still here? And there is another, um, there is R into CEO. Another nurse from Jamaica, uh, she has a channel as well. You can check out her channel um, where she share a lot of information regarding self-care. And she's also a coach as well, a nurse coach. So you can also check out her channel, um, R into CEO. She is from, I think she said she's from Montego Bay. Um, so she has some really good information that you can actually check out as well. All right. And then there is Deron. Deron is another. Deron Speaks is another um, person who is doing a YouTube channel. Um, he has some really good content as well. He's a nurse. So when you get a chance, you can always check out those persons, um, channel as well. All right. All right. Do we have anybody else asking any um question patient says did you feel lonely or isolated when you just moved to the state yes um and even though when you have family with you you're still gonna feel you know a little bit lonely um because it's not it's not the culture here is different and as i said in one of my other video on the live you know you could be living right here and your neighbor is like right here and you definitely don't know who that person is 
or if you do say hi one or two times that's it because everybody is just driving into their garage you know exiting and that's it so you're not really having that much you know interaction outside of work you'll go to work and uh, yeah you spend what 12 hours at work and that was it and then by the time you leave you go home it's just you and your family or just you alone if you are the only person that shows up here um so you tend to feel a little bit lonely and isolated because then you have to remember you're learning you know about the culture and everything so you might go and say something and probably you know you realize that you said the wrong word like i remember one day like a young lady asked me i thought we were friends and uh, so i always tell people nobody asks me you know my opinion right now because i'm still learning and uh, it was a case where she asked about her face she had a round face but she wanted to cut her hairstyle if you you know for the, those persons who are jamaican you know the portia seems to hairstyle so she wanted to cut the hairstyle looking like that and i tell her that it wasn't gonna fit her face because her face was just too round and i tell her the girl stop talk to me yes i walk around the entire department mm, so me you know does zip it nobody say anything because as i say if you say something then you know you become the enemy as um, enemy of the state so you have to be very careful so you realize that you'll probably just be alone because um it is a situation where you don't want to say something and then you know you're not able to you know keep the friends that you normally keep because of something that is okay in your culture but it's different here in this culture. So you just have to learn and adjust and change certain things as you go along. Hi, Ro Hi, Sister Rosemary. Thank you so much for tuning in. She says, good afternoon, Stacey. Very informative information you're sharing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy that you find it, you know, informative. And I know other nurses or, you know, other persons who are transitioning um, would be, you know, appreciative of this as well. Pretty Eyes says, would you ever consider becoming a travel nurse? I was actually doing travel nursing for a while. So um, last year, was it last year? When I moved over here, I was doing, you know, travel nursing, but it was more of a permanent contract when you move from Jamaica to that hospital and uh, or long-term contract travel nurse. And then I was doing travel nursing after that. So never really did a full-time, full-time job. When I moved to the state of Texas, I got a full. I did a full time job, and then went back to traveling, did local contracts as well, and uh, yeah, did another uh, full time job um, at a specialist hospital, and that was pretty decent. Um, and then and now I switch over back to you know just doing house calls. So yeah, travel nursing is very is very nice. You know, you just have to ensure that you know. Um, you just have to ensure that you're okay with the cases that they'll be throwing at you because remember they're thinking that you'll be working more money or they know that you're working more money than them so you know you'll get all the different kinds of patients you're welcome patients no problem you can feel free to throw any other questions down there and i'll answer it okay um pretty eyes says would you rather it overworking in a hospital oh so when i was doing travel nursing i was doing emergency room nursing I did a few freestanding, um, but those were okay. Not my favorite um, because they were more, you know, uh, patient-pleasing. You know, them kind of way. Eh? So because you come and you know that you have a good up, good up insurance, you feel as though whatever you say, the doctor's supposed to write it and then the nurse supposed to serve it. So I never really like it that much, but it was okay. Um, but now I'm doing the house calls and I, I really enjoy this that I'm doing, you know, going house to house, seeing patients, interacting with them. Their days, it's really sad and lonely, you know, just listening to the stories of those patients and seeing, you know, how they're living and all. But yeah, um, I kind of miss the emergency room, but not that bad because now I can actually sit down and, you know, relax myself at when I used to leave the hospital, I was like very tired most of the days. Like, you know, just imagine you're, and then depending on the hospital, if it is like money centered, just imagine you're working for 12 hours and you can't even, you know, sit and take a five minutes good. 
you know, you can't even run to the bathroom because every second, you know, somebody wants something or, you know, it's all about time, 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 time. So, um, I'm enjoying this part of it now. I think it's time for me to settle down, you know. I think I would love, yes, I, I you will definitely, you will definitely enjoy travel nursing. Um, because as I say, you will go to different places and you learn the culture there. And as I say, not all the hospitals are the same experience. You learn, you know, different cultures in different hospitals. So you learn, you adapt, you know, and then you move on. So you're not really not a mix up with any facility. You know, you just go there, see your patients, finish your contract, move on to another location. And that was it. Um, so yeah, it is, it is nice. Um, but it only, it only works out if you say, for example, you're not necessarily single, but if you have somebody that is flexible, if you have a partner that is very flexible as well, then it will work out in the favor of both of you guys, you know, but if you have children, then you just have to do a lot of consideration because, you know, just imagine you're probably out for three months doing a contract and then, you know, you still have a child to think about. So you don't want to have that headache when you're doing travel nursing. But I know like you have some persons who do have like, you know, an RV and so they bring their family with them, do their homeschooling and so it kind of work out a little bit better. Yeah. So how are you doing, Sister Butler? But yeah, it is um, a very lonely experience. So you just have um, you just have to, you know, make friends at the facility and the communities that you you're you're living in. You have to make friends and just hope hope that they understand you, and uh, you know, and that's it. I won't have either free as a bee. <laughs> Pretty eyes. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, but you definitely will enjoy it, and especially if you if you love traveling you know then that is something that you will definitely enjoy because sometimes you they'll send you in some you know some far out place and uh, it's probably nice there like so for example in maine a lot of persons will come there in like the winter time just to experience you know the winter experience down there or christmas or you know but apart from that there's nothing else to do in maine so it depends on where you go uh patient says has nursing always been your dream job uh, it has been. Um, I wanted to become a nurse and a teacher or a teacher. So at the time when I started, um, when I started uh, university, I wasn't able to get into nursing because it was, it was a case where, you know, someone, we had student workers at the time on campus and that person had told me that I needed, you know, human and social biology to get into nursing, but I had just a straight bio. And so, um, I never ended up getting in at that time. So I started my second option, which was teacher education. But then I know that I had the requirements. So I went back to the admissions office later on in the semester, but the programs in Jamaica for nursing, it's like, you know, you have to do it like the August, you have to start in the August period. And so I was able to transition from teacher education the following August after you know they had reviewed my subjects and everything and that's how i ended up back in the emergency not emergency back into or i ended up in the nursing department so yeah um but it was a case where i was young i was from a younger age i was admitted in the hospital as well and uh, you know the nurses were really nice and it was something that i wanted to do you know because in jamaica nurses wear white uniform and them just look good in them uniform and just like any police you know like any child seeing a police officer soldier they just want to see the uniform and know that that's what they want to become even though it was a case they never know anything about it and it was the same thing for me at that time so yeah <coughs> sorry rosemary okay sister butler says i am doing okay my sweet daughter and i just love your channel thank you so much for tuning in always sister rose butler uh really do appreciate that she is like my you know my second mother you know at um at church i really do appreciate that um keep moving and i continue to pray for you thank you so much um okay patients patients as a senior nurse what's one encouragement you give to a new newbie nurse Okay, um, 
one encouragement I would give to a newbie nurse is, you know, um, things might look tough at the initial, you know, the initial stage, the phase that you're at. But once you love it, once you go in with an open mind, you know, you will find out that it is uh, the best decision you've ever made. You know, knowing that you can touch the life of anybody that you come in contact with. So, you know, just go there with an open mind and, uh, you know, be the best version of the person that you can be. Don't go over there and be no copycat. You know, just go over there and give it your best shot. Do your best and uh, you just leave everything else up to God. All right. You're welcome, patience. No problem. Um, but yeah, sometimes we go out there and we see persons doing something and we say, okay, then yes, this is what we're going to do. And, you know, but you probably try to copy somebody else and you end up messing up. But yeah, don't go in there with that kind of attitude. Just go in there. You know, you've already studied. You've already done everything that you're supposed to do in terms of your training, getting your certification and know you're there. You know, just go out there and just be you, you know. Be you, enjoy what you're doing, and uh, that's it. Um, yes, it is. It is good advice for everyone. Whatever area you're in, it doesn't necessarily have to be in nursing. You know, whatever you have a passion to do, and that's your, your, your you know, the area that you decided to go in, then just go out there and be the best version of what you can be, you know. Um, so yeah, but that's about it with, um, so are you planning on transitioning anytime soon? Pretty eyes. Okay. You seem like you're really interested in the travel nursing, but travel nursing, um, right now, I know the thing with travel nursing is that, um, after COVID, you know, during COVID, the rates were pretty good. And then after COVID, you know, the rates kind of go back down. So you have a lot of travel nursing positions out there, but the rates are not that good. So you have persons who are still doing it because it is a situation where they love travel nursing or they love to travel. And you have some persons who are doing it because, you know, they don't want to go back to like a full-time job. But then the market is not that busy again for travel nurses because the rates are not good. Because a lot of persons, when you look at somebody who has 10, 15 years of nursing experience, that person is comparing what a full-time job is going to be offering them. And if they've already experienced travel nursing for 5, 10 years, you know, 